Hey, welcome back. This is the old man writing from the kitchen. Hey, this is a special show today because I am wound up tighter than a tick in a cuckoo's nest. Man, am I upset. This morning I got up and took a look at the news like I do every morning. You know, you kind of stumble into the to the uh, computer laptop while you're eating breakfast and you check on the local and national news. Used to be we could, you know, open a newspaper and do this, but not any longer. And what do I find? Another school shooting. More people dead. And a 15-year-old kid that caused the havoc really upsets me. And as I'm scanning further down in the news on the front page of my news feed, here splashes apart a whole nother story of a teacher who had a kill list at a Catholic school, no less. What's going on, folks? Think about this for just a moment. If you don't think that violence is a possibility in your school, in your town, in your state, think again. And really think hard, because this is popping up all over. What's driving these kids to go and kill innocent bystanders? To walk in to a school area, open the doors to a hallway with army fatigues on and high-powered assault weapons and mow people down as they walk down the hall and pop doors open and just take random shots just walking down the hall does this sound like a school that's safe is this what you want to hear in the news about your school I don't I worry about my grandkids part of my family's in Texas and Texas has a tougher law And you'll notice that they enforce their laws when it comes to gun violence. State of Washington, eh, I haven't figured it out yet, but so far we've been very blessed and have not had too many problems. Although we've had some bullying, naturally all schools have that and have had it for years. And we've had some really interesting situations come up with different employees in the school in the Puyall District, Franklin Pierce District, etc., But nothing, nothing like what you just heard, gunshots, as a 15-year-old walks down the hallway of a school and kills people. This is just not an isolated situation. This has been going on now for the last two, three years. Well, let's take the Wayback Machine. And we're at Combine. Columbine, you remember that school, where two young men decided to change the world and started... This whole mess of showing up on school grounds with loaded guns, killing people at random. How about the jerk that killed people in a theater? The wacko cases are thousands and thousands going on. A lot of them we don't hear about. Maybe it's just a small situation where, oh, Junior got mad at his principal, so he drove down the road and took a automatic rifle, however he got it, and opens fire on the house, shooting holes in it. How about drive-by shootings like in the city of Tacoma, which are becoming very popular in Seattle? You know, when you have cowards, and that's what these people are, cowards, disranged mental cowards, who figure that they got one more moment of bravery. These are people that have been exposed to, I think, online gaming to the point where they can't tell reality from real-life adventure. Some of them have been abused at home. Some of these killers have come from families that just are dysfunctional. But why are we catching on to this situation? Why are we not taking this real action, real action, to stop what's going on? It's scary. And I don't know what we'll ever do about it if we don't start a conversation, if we don't get involved. Hello? We can live through these tragedies. Many communities throughout this United States is doing such. But can we live through the idea that we did not try to stop this from going on? Now, I know what everybody's going to say. Got to have gun control, gun control, gun control. Ladies and gentlemen who can hear my voice, gun control is not the whole answer. Yes, it plays a part in this problem. But respectable, honest people that are with guns in their homes 
have taken the precautions to lock those guns down, to keep those guns out of children's hands, and also educating their children how dangerous they really are. What is the use of having a gun in the house? Well, let's flip the coin and hope it comes up tails. Because right now, the fear of home invasion is at its peak. People are driving down the street. I noticed in the news this morning that two fathers exchanged shots, got mad at each other on road rage, and shot two individuals that had no reason to be shot to begin with. This is gun violence, folks. Now, the police departments are doing the best they can. But, of course, remember now, because of chops in Seattle, we had to cut that that budget. We got to cut that budget down. They did not handle that situation right. So we cut that budget down. We got rid of 400 officers, I believe was the last count. I don't know how many they've rehired. I don't know what they're doing in Seattle. I know the new police chief is under uh, constant pressure to get things straightened up because gangs have moved into Seattle. Well, not moved into Seattle. They've taken over Seattle. They've given areas of Seattle business merchants scared to death that they're going to come to work and find their building shot with holes in it or set on fire or the front windows busted out or a, a various of neat criminal activity which doesn't ever seem to stop. I, I don't know. I drove into Tacoma the other day and it looks like Tacoma, which has been rated as one of the safer cities in the state of Washington, is beginning to follow the trend now, a lot of people say that part of this trend is because the campless and the people are, that are living on the streets, the ones that are shooting up with dope, have no homes, and really are living off the system. They say that this is a, a viral disease that takes over that allows gangs and other organizations to move in and destroy cities one by one. I think that they have a little bit of weight there. Sure, homeless is a problem. There's no doubt about it. But to blame all of that on school shootings, on community shootings, on gang shootings is totally stupid. That what we need to do is we need to figure out how we can support our communities, how we can take our communities and put them on a what I call a goal of achievement simply by communication, watching out for each other. When we see crimes, not ignoring them and putting our head in the sand, but reporting them. My hands off to the kids at the Catholic school and back east, which the teacher in the school had a hit list. Yeah. Of parents, students, and employees that she wanted to murder. Huh. And a list of students she wanted to choke. That's great, isn't it? wonderful idea to have a teacher teaching your kids that's so mentally unbalanced. Now, all teachers are not in this category whatsoever. Maybe two, three percent. And those three percent now are chasing good teachers out of the schools, making schools unsafe. As you've heard in other podcasts that I've done, the rate of sexual activity in schools has gone nuts. And this, with a touch of realization that the schools have got to actually get back to educating the kids, not taking over their parents' rights in education of their child through sexual deviation, not taking over the child as far as mental capacities on you are a free individual when you're in the fifth grade, so if you are thinking you're a trans or maybe your sexual identity needs to be explored, that the school has the right to do so without telling the parents. Do the schools have the right also that have removed God from schools to allow the satanic groups to move in? Oh, they're harmless. Uh-huh. Just want to show that God has framed Satan. Yeah, framed him. This is malarkey, garbage, and absolute, I don't know what you could call it, to be frank and honest about it, but it's really something that is not, not apparently, what I would call mentally balanced individuals, and that's the way I look at it. Well, I'll be back in just a moment. We're going to take, take a moment, a pause for the cause, and we're going to have Paul Richardson do a little Marvin Gaye on the, the piano. We'll be right back.
Paul Richardson on the piano. Oh, this guy is remarkable. He really is. During the time that the pandemic was really full force and everybody was asked to stay home, Paul came on with the idea of, hey, why not play a little music and have people kind of kind of relax? Because music can relax and, and make your day, and he certainly did. He played off and on throughout the pandemic. And you can find Paul on YouTube. I highly recommend look up Paul Richardson and subscribe. Oh, he's got a great YouTube channel. And some of the songs and the variations that he puts together with arrangements that are really relaxing and fun to listen to. Of course, if you're an old timer like me, wow. Now that, friends, is music. So thank you very much, uh, Paul uh, Richardson. Thank you. What a great community hero he really, truly is. So we're back with some more information. As you know, I've been, well, basically yelling and screaming about school safety. I know that there's a school in Washington State that is now arming their teachers, and I wonder if that's a great idea or not. I don't know for sure. I think the problem's going to be is, as time has gone by, I've noticed in the last three, four years, that the security of our schools, at least out here, have gotten to the point where I feel like when I drop some information off at one of the schools or whatever, I'm walking into Walla Walla, and I'm kind of concerned that... uh, uh, you know, everybody's scared of me. I'm ready for somebody to pat me down, ask questions that are like an interrogation. That's not the kind of atmosphere that I'd like my kids to be around, for sure. Now, I realize that when they're locked into their classrooms, their teachers help relax them and, and put them into an environment of learning, and that's that's wonderful. My hat is truly off to the teachers that are fighting this war right now to bring better education to schools, to bring safety to schools. It's a massive war, and our teachers need all the support that they can get to fulfill to keep our kids safe. But we also must remember that it takes more than just the teachers. It takes the community. It takes the management of schools, the superintendents, and other individuals that work in the system of education to work together and to understand that schools are to be safe, great places to learn, and to be able to excel and reach goals for later in life. This is very, very important. I know I've harped about this trans thing off and on, and it hits the schools, and it hits the papers, and it hits the communities all the time. And I've felt that some people really are upset with me over my attitude. But I'm sorry, I do not believe that a child can figure out if he's trans or homosexual or what until at least he's out of school or she's out of school. I don't think school's the place that we should have this type of activity going on. Now, I know they're taking books out of libraries because it has the wrong pronouns. This PC correctness also has gone to the point of no return. You, you, you don't want to say, hi, how are you today, Mrs. Whatchamacallit? Or maybe you don't want to go up to a teacher and say, my, I really, I really like you. It's nice that, you know, that you're my teacher without being a little etchy about this. If you're a student or a teacher accepting this in for fear that, that's not PC correct and the after wrath of, well, you should never have done that. Are you a pedophile? And all the other garbage that goes along with it pops up. Don't the teachers have a rough enough time keeping the kids safe from gun-toting individuals or students that are upset? Doesn't the system of education have enough bumps on its nose right now that are blossoming all over this country that they don't need to fight another war on English pronouns, names, etc. Hey, let's get back to arithmetic, reading, and whoops, I forgot, we don't do cursive anymore, printing. Wonderful idea, wouldn't it be? If you've noticed that the national averages of the tests taken that show how well we're doing in schools has fallen considerably. Some schools are even coming up with new programs to work with the kids for the advancement of the basic fundamentals that should have been taught to begin with. Now, the pandemic and stay at home threw a real, real rock in the middle of the road to successful education. And that's because, simple, 
a lot of times students could uh, sit at home, flip open their laptop, and start working and actually not need a lot of supervision, okay? But there was also those students who flipped it open, closed it, and went out and rode their bicycles. Or maybe they went down at the store to get together with the rest of the people that should have been watching what's going on with the kids at school and at home to get an education, to make sure that they're opening their laptop and filling out the paperwork and doing the tests and et cetera that they've been asked to do. Now, that was a pretty tough time. Uh, locations grew, you know, where there were different areas that if you could not teach at home, but you wanted to make sure remote learning was happening, that you could do so. Sometimes in the community, families, one or two families, would actually take turns watching the students during school time to make sure that they're actually performing and doing what the students are supposed to be doing on their laptops. Wow. Playing games was not one of the original things I don't think that the educational system was really interested in. I think they were interested in doing your assignments, responding. Now, that's very hard to do if you're a teacher. And it was a lot more work for a teacher. Well, we lived through two years of that problem. And what happened? Because of the fact that the system was not ready to go to begin with, it failed. Many students, I think, that were educated need to rush up on their education during this time period simply because they were not really, I would say, coming to church and sitting in a pew listening to the Word. They were more or less enjoying life. Oh, heck, don't have to worry about school today. Don't have to get up. Mom, Dad are working. I'll check in so that they won't uh, send a note or an email home that I'm not cooperating. Mom will never know. And I can slide by. And that's exactly what happened. So now that we're back into the classrooms, now we've got violence. We've got teachers raping students. Not all teachers, as I mentioned before, only maybe 1% or 2% in the nation's teachers that pull this stunt. But it's getting to be more and more out of the, out of the bag, so to speak. It, it's to the point now where I hate to even turn on the news. I don't know about you, but I do worry about my kids and my community's children. I want to see kids have a good time and grow up like I did. Well, maybe not quite like I did, but be able to grow up and enjoy Set goals, build family relationships, move forward so that when their time comes to go to college or into the workforce, they're a solid, educated American family and ready to face whatever this great nation has for them. Not the situation of learning how to make sure that we, we shoot before we think Make sure that uh, everything that we do has to be balanced out so that I really don't have to have initiative or really don't want to work type attitude. That's what we're growing now. Socialistic? Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm not a politician. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a guy sitting in front of a microphone looking out the studio window to a community and to a state that I love. I want our kids to be safe and educated. I want them to be able to grow and enjoy life like I've had the God blessings to do. So, you've been great to be with you today, by the way. I really do appreciate everybody listening. And I think for the close of the show, I want to do something a little bit different. In the 60s, we were getting ready to walk on the moon. Hey, we had a lot of education going on. NASA was being built. And our president, JFK, made a speech that I really, really think fits today if we start our conversation and move towards golds. And here's what he had to say. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. That's the story. That's America. That's a leader who maybe we didn't agree with all of his politics. Maybe we didn't agree with his lifestyle. 
But we must agree that that was a leader who was out to lead us with a message that I believe that all of the world should have heard. You see, I believe that if we set our goals in our communities, in our church, if we set up our goals for our family, this country will never be conquered, nor will it ever be divided and then conquered. Unity in the United States is based on the factor of goals, communication, and that simple conversation that brings out the best in all of us. Till next time, keep a very, very positive view in your mind, love in your heart for your neighbors, and you'll always keep us smiling. Thanks.